Hey everyone, welcome back to Auto Tech Garage. My name's Keith. Today I want to give you a little sneak peek into one of the jobs we're working on here today. We've got this Hyundai Elantra GT. It's got a dual clutch manual transmission that's automatically controlled by the computer and needs a clutch replacement on it. Kind of wanted to walk through the process on here just a little bit, show you what it looks like. It's a pretty unique setup. We see it sometimes on the Ford Focus. There's some other cars out there that have it as well. It's a little bit rare, but still an interesting setup requires a few special tools. Plus we'll be putting an actuator in it and also replacing the release bearings on it as a set. So uh, we're gonna walk you through a couple of little procedures in this process and then uh, show you just what it looks like. Right behind me here, I've got the transmission assembly as the dual clutch mechanism inside of here. I've got a replacement clutch assembly here. There's a brand new actuator. We've got a pair of release bearings, sprocket and some clips. All this has to go in this vehicle in order to get this thing working properly. I wanted to show you this actuator here. This has um, a very unique adjustment procedure on it. it. requires a very specific tool for it. So you can measure the throw of these little rods here. They're inside these little plugs. If you take these out, there's a window where you can insert a special tool to make an adjustment to it to get the measurement exactly right. We'll be installing a brand new assembly on here. It's a preset from the factory to make sure that it's gonna shift properly. So we won't need to do that on this particular car here today, but it's important that you understand it does require something very special and unique in order to get this adjusted properly if you're not going to replace it. So the first thing we have to do is remove the retaining ring in here. Let's take that out. There you have it. Next, we take the sprocket out. Now we're ready to install the puller and to remove the clutches. There we go. There we go. Just like that. Still going. Okay, all right, hang on. drop it, heavy. drop it. Yeah, it's just heavy. <laughs> With the clutch disc assembly removed, now we can remove both release bearings. There is an inner bearing and an outer bearing. You'll need to remove the cover off the actuator with these two bolts. There's six bolts that hold the actuator on. We'll remove those. Mm -hmm. All right, now with the actuator out, we can remove the clutch forks, and then we have a sleeve on the inside that needs to be removed. Now we're gonna remove the shift forks with the three bolts. All right, we've got the old clutch out. Here's what the forks look like. The sleeve, the cover, and a couple of release bearings. There's the inside with the bell housing with everything removed. I've got these clutch forks here cleaned up a bit and I just wanted to mention that we want to make sure you check these surfaces here for wear. Um, if they're starting to wear against the release bearing where they rub, um, you'll probably have to replace these. These look like they're in really great shape. We're going to reuse those. Let's install them now. We've installed the forks now. We've installed the new sleeve. We're gonna to torque these down and then we need to remember to put a little lubricant on the fork fingers where they contact the release bearings. This way they don't wear out prematurely. Let's do that. I've just installed the new release bearings. Um, the larger bearing, the outer bearing only goes on one way. The inner bearing can go on one of two ways and just make sure that it's located properly within the sleeve. Should be good to go. We're gonna install the actuator next. Next, I wanna install this actuator. I put a little lubricant here in the ball socket on the forks also, and then we're gonna to torque these bolts down. There's six of them all together.
We'll reinstall the cover with the two bolts. Okay, we're gonna install the clutch disc assembly. All right. With our clutch installed, we're gonna be installing our jig here to press this back on. We've already got it mocked up so that it aligns to all the bell housing bolts where we want it. We're just gonna install this. Get it centered, and then we'll snug that up so we can press this on. All right, we're gonna try to install this without exceeding 12 foot pounds. All right, I feel it getting close, and there it is. We've got this all pressed down. I'm gonna remove the jig. We need to start installing the snap ring, the sprocket, and the second snap ring. Okay, with the first snap ring installed, we'll install the sprocket. Make sure it seats all the way down, and then we'll install the snap ring. Mm -hmm. All right, the snap, room's, snap ring is installed underneath the groove, and we're fully assembled. And there it is, the new one installed. We're getting ready to install this transmission assembly back in this Hyundai. Now, before we go any further with this, I just wanted to talk a minute about the purpose of a dual clutch system. This is not something that you see on an ordinary car. This is really a performance feature. That's what it was designed for initially. It allows the transmission to be in two gears at once, basically. So it'll have a, one, of the, one of the shafts inside the transmission will be all the even gears, one will be the odd gears. It enables them to be in two gears at once and basically switch between shafts on there. And that's how it gets these lightning fast shifts on these cars. You'll see them in a lot of exotic cars, Mercedes, AMG, BMW, the M series. You'll see them in Porsche. They have their own PDK system. Volkswagen uses it. Uh, you'll even see them in the you know, Ford Focus ST, I think has it. There's a, there's a bunch of cars out there that use this type of system. And it's getting a little more popular, I think, over the years. Um, initially, we only saw it on really high-end cars and uh, exotic cars. Now you're gonna see it on a lot of other vehicles. And um, it's, you know, there's nothing uh, crazy or anything like that. It requires some special tools, special to techniques. The cost goes up quite a bit, obviously, but it's there to give you a little performance benefit. It also a little bit better on fuel efficiency because once the clutch is engaged, there's no loss in a, in a torque converter type system on a regular automatic. So uh, there's definitely a benefit there, maybe a little bit better fuel economy. Uh, better efficiency uh, and quicker shifts is really the main thing. We also noticed that some of these gearboxes, they're quite a bit lighter than an automatic transmission. So there is a weight savings there as well. You know, really just using a manual gearbox without all the components that you find in an automatic transmission, just using some, some extra components on top of that in order to shift it electronically. So you definitely get a little bit better control out of your shift points on it, and, and you definitely get some advantages from the performance side of it. Uh, in addition to maybe some small benefits on the, like I said, on the fuel economy and things. Wanted to give you that kind of deep dive into, you know, something most people won't get to take a look at. Some of the internal components here, once we've got an engine transmission separated and, and looking at the uh, internal parts of the, the bell housing like you're seeing here. I want to provide content for you like this and I hope you're enjoying it. Thanks for watching us. Please like and subscribe and don't forget we've got more videos here. Go ahead and watch another one. We appreciate it.